Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, what's up, uh, Spreaker? Hope you guys are doing well. I know I'm being blessed. Hope you guys are being blessed also. So um, I apologize, man. The sun, I'm, I don't know why I parked this way, but this is the only way I can get right now. So I'm dealing with this sun, man. So apologize um, if you see any glare here. Uh, Spreaker, you ain't got to worry about that, right? <laughs> so um, guys on YouTube, again, I, I'll say it again. In case you don't understand what's happening, all right, when I say Spreaker, there's another side. Um, this this video is going to go up. The audio side of this video is going to go up uh, on another platform. It's called Spreaker.com. Uh, look up Bill for this network and you'll find a program there. Um, it's just the audio version. There's a live chat room. You create yourself a profile. Hit the little bubble uh, up there. Come into the chat room and um, we can interact uh, as the show comes up, comes on live. It'll be this afternoon sometime. This is Wednesday. It'll be up on Wednesday uh, at some point. And um, hope you come and enjoy. So, Spreaker, you know I already know what it is, right? So let's uh, let's get at it. So um, this week, um, obviously, we're doing NFL. Um, we, I mean, it was a lot of nice games, uh, important games, exciting games this past uh, week, week 17. We're going into week 18. That means uh, a lot for quite a few teams. Comes to positioning, uh, comes to who's getting in, who's getting out, um, all those things, right? And uh, it's a lot. It's a lot to hit on. So just bear with me. I'm gonna try to get through it. And I'm gonna touch a little bit about college. Um, I don't have a strong opinion, but I do wanna talk about it a little bit. So um, week 17. So. Um, my sweetheart, her ra I mean her, uh, her Raiders, but she, she like the Raiders too now, but, um, the Saints, <clears throat> the Saints, uh, got a win, um, against the Panthers and it was just basically defense, man. This Saints defense is, um, it's a championship caliber defense, definitely a playoff caliber defense. And, uh, there's a, a very good scenario where they might make it to the playoffs. Okay. And uh, display that defense in uh, playoff uh, situations. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But as far as this game is concerned, um, the Saints wasn't extremely efficient on offense. Um, this game was won by the defense, man. This game was truly won on the defensive side of the ball. And it's uh, it's a joy to watch. I, I love seeing this defense. They're so aggressive. Um, they play with so much energy, and uh, especially when they're at home, that home home cry gets behind them, and it's uh, something special to see. So I'm hoping that they do make it uh, into the playoffs, um, not only because that's my wife's team, but I just like seeing the Saints play, to be honest with you. I'll be totally honest with you. So good win for the Saints. It, it kept their playoff uh, hopes alive, okay? So... Um, Let's look at um, some of the other games from um, week 17. Uh, so I got notes here. So let's go with, um, I do not want to start with that team there. Lord have mercy. Uh, I don't even want to talk about that team. And we'll get to that later, but I don't want to talk about it now. Anyway, Philly and Washington. Very competitive game, man. Very competitive. So uh, Philly got the win, got a full point win. I think just they had better quarterback play. Uh, Hurt, Jalen Hurts is just, he's um, he's forming himself into something special, man. He's He really is. I love to see that young man play. Um, and that defense. Uh, in the second half, this team turned it on, and uh, they played very, very good ball. They went into halftime, and uh, they came out saying, look, we want to be in the playoffs, and we got to prove that we want to be in this playoffs. They were playing their rival, you know, division rival. And um, that second half was uh, was special. And um, I just love, I, I watch, I love watching Jalen Hurts. He, he was the difference in this game. And um, he, he, you know, Philly really deserves this victory uh, based on his play. So good win for Philly. It um, put him into the playoffs. So good job. Uh, Rams, Rams over the Ravens. 
man, this was um this was an interesting game, man. Um you know, uh so I think one thing we could probably identify, right? Uh OBJ wasn't the problem in Cleveland. <laughs> okay. OBJ is balling out. Okay. He is he is playing very well uh with the Rams. Um the Rams defense is is answering the bell. They're playing real good. Uh they played very good in this game. Um they played a very challenging Ravens team that was very motivated. They were still holding on. Uh they still have a chance to get into the playoffs. Speaking of the Ravens, but it's very slim now, okay? Um so they were very highly motivated. Uh Huntley played a pretty good game, man. Um he tried his best. I mean, he's uh he's a backup for a reason, but He's talented, right? And um, they they pushed the Rams to the limit. You know, Rams got a what a one one point victory here. So um, yeah. Uh, and also the Ravens got um, the benefit of, um, of of Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford kept both teams in this game. <laughs> Matthew Stafford earned his paycheck, right? He earned his paycheck this week. He kept both teams in the game, okay? With all those interceptions and uh, then he got a pick six, right? He kept both teams in the game. He earned that paycheck this week, you know? So, <laughs> oh, it's a joke, man. It's a joke, okay? <laughs> but um, really, though, um, if the Rams, you know, the Rams are in position, um to really make a run in the playoffs. But if that run is going to be um, legitimate, you're going to have to get more consistent play from your quarterback, right? These kind of, these kind of mistakes. And look, the, uh, the Ravens, here's the thing about the Ravens, right? When the Ravens are healthy, we all know this is a playoff caliber team, right? But the Ravens are not very healthy right now, okay? The back end of their defense is not very healthy. Yet this guy was throwing to him like they were, you know, they was his team. You know what I'm saying? So you cannot, if if you're a Rams fan, if you're in part of that Rams organization, you have to get in Stafford's head, man. He has to play better. He really does. If this team plans on making a good run, and with the with the roster that they have, there is no reason why they shouldn't. Okay, so. Good win, good win for the Rams. Um, OBJ is balling out. I look forward to seeing him uh, in the playoffs. And um, good win for the Rams, okay? Um, Tampa Bay and the Jets. So the game is, I mean, Tampa Bay won, you know, at, you know, so what? Who cares, right? The big story in this is AB, right? Uh, what AB did and um, how this is going to play out. So, I really want to break this down in a sensitive way because I want people to truly understand the words that are coming out of my mouth, okay? And not assume what I'm saying is um, what is not, okay? I am truly, truly concerned about players and CTE. I do not take that lightly, okay? Um, sometimes I get frustrated with some of the rules that the NFL has put in to protect players from CTE. Some of the things is just so hard for players to play full speed and still do some of the things that's required to not get a penalty, okay? It's making the, the job a lot harder, but I understand it. I will I will deal with the frustration as a spectator for these guys' safety. So safety is definitely something that's on my mind. I care about these players. Okay? They're not just entertaining. I know that they have they have family. They have they forget or first, they have their own health. They deserve to be healthy. Okay? They don't deserve to be crazy in the head. All right? They have family. Their family doesn't need to be to be dealing with that those type of issues. Yet this is the profession they have chosen, 
and that's part of it. But whatever can be done to protect them and whatever can be done to help them through that process, through their careers, right? I'm all on board for it. I do not take it lightly. So I'm saying all that to say what I'm about to say, please keep that in mind, okay? Please. Because I'm not gonna just say CTE and that hit. Because look, I look if, if guys on the Spricker side, you know, I have clowned about AB not being right ever since that perfect hit. I've put it in the chat room myself, okay? And I'm not saying it's not a legitimate comment, all right? But what I will say is this. What's awfully strange, there's a couple of things that's awfully strange that I want to point out, okay? I, I'm not a doctor. I've never, obviously, I've never met AB. I've never talked to him. I'm not a doctor, so I've never evaluated him, okay? So this is just Raider Cavs' opinion and the way Raider Cavs sees it, okay? You got it? We good? Because I know I'm going to get some, some pushback after what I make this next comment. I'm not giving A.B. the credit or the or the out of just saying it's simply because of C.T.E. Okay, here's why. Hey, stop typing. You're typing too fast. Stop typing. I know you're typing over there. All right, just chill for a second. Hear me out before you start typing. Okay. The hit that he took. And the multiple hits, we highlight that hit because it was a one hell of a hit, right? And you can you can see, you can see damn near the eyes going to roll in the back of his head, right? Okay, we can see that, right? Okay, so I'm not I'm not discounting that hit for what it was. That was a devastating hit. I know it would have changed my life. <laughs> That's for damn sure. <laughs> So I'm not discounting the hit. So stop typing. I see you typing over there. Stop typing, okay? Just hear me out first, all right? So that's not the only hit that man has taken, okay? He's taken other hits. And how many times have we seen guys get hit with something that looks so simple, something that's every day, and it's like it it totally throws them off and you, you know, it ruins their career, you know, or at least puts them out for quite some time. And then you see one massive hit and it's like, he pops right back up and he's good. Okay. We don't know exactly what causes those type of injuries. It's still a mystery. Recognize it. I'm recognizing it. I'm not saying I'm discounting it. Okay. But, that hit definitely was devastating. But my question to you is this. Why does A.B. act crazy when he doesn't get his way? Okay? That's my question to you. Now, let's go back when he left Pittsburgh, right? We immediately threw it on Ben. And I ain't going to stop. <laughs> okay? I'm not going to stop that. Okay? But when you look at some of the things that happened in that whole breakup, right? AB had to take some of the blame for it too. I'm not saying it was all on Ben. AB, but AB had, if you go back to the story, and I'm not going to rehash the whole details, right? But to me, it was like, yeah, I'm definitely giving AB the credit. And I'm definitely going to be on this side with this situation because A, I don't like Ben and B, AB has a, a legitimate uh, um, side to his story. When he came over to the Raiders, right? Now, I don't care how you feel about the Raiders. I don't care about how you feel about uh, Mike Mayock. I don't care about how you feel about Gruden. I don't care how you feel about the Raiders organization, period. Right? That dude gave up $30 million when all he had to do was shut up for 30 more minutes and his contract would have been guaranteed. And then he would have, he could have talked his way, bullshitted his way, excuse me, bullshitted his way out of the team. 
if he wanted to. And he would have done it with $30 million in his pocket. Now, at the time, it was so crazy. It was so absurd to me. I'm like, he has to have CTE. That is about the stupidest thing I've ever seen anyone do. And that's when I made the comment, right? That's when I made the comment. But then you go back and you look at some of the things that happened after that, right? So his time with New England, right? So I don't know all the details about it, right? But apparently Brady had his side. Brady is, you know, has taken him under his wing as far as, uh, you know, a friend uh, uh, having his back or whatever. Um, but Belichick couldn't handle him. You know, he couldn't deal with him, right? Now, you can say it was just Belichick just being a butt, right? But as much as I do not like New England, I give Belichick a little credit. Um, if you play, if you ball out, if you buy into what he's trying to do, he's going to give you a shot. He's going to give you a shot. He might be a cheater, uh, whatever. Whatever you want to put, whatever you, I just don't like him. He's just not my guy. But he's one hell of a coach. Okay? He's one hell of a coach. And he doesn't just turn down players just because, you know, whatever, right? Look at, look, everyone said Randy Moss was a head case. He thrived over there. He thrived in New England, okay? I'm just saying. Randy Moss took some hits. You ain't gonna tell me Randy Moss, they never got, never got hit, okay? Maybe maybe it wasn't as bad as that one hit, but I'm just trying to tell you, the the the... What we see it on in our with our eyes as what's devastating doesn't necessarily have to be as devastating. And what we see as something as simple could be devastating. So what you might say, oh, I ain't never seen Randy get hit like that. Randy has been hit. Randy head has been on that turf. So you're not going to sit and tell me that there's an op there wasn't an opportunity for Randy not to have CTE. If you if you play if you play high school football, there's an opportunity for you to have CTE. You understand what I'm saying? That is a very dangerous sport. So I'm not going to you're not going to sit here and say Randy Moss didn't have. Uh, 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 or the difference in Randy Moss and, and uh, A.B. was that A.B. got hit, devastate, a devastating hit. And that's why he's acting like that. We are discounting other hits. We're discounting the fact just catching a ball cleanly and hitting your head on the turf as something that's not devastating. That could be devastating. Okay? So, what I'm trying to get at is this. When he did, when he, when AB went to New England and it didn't work out, that's when I started questioning: Is it CTE, or is he just a jerk, or is just he just a selfish person? Is he a AB person or a team person? Well, I think we could all agree he's a AB person, but that's okay as long as you're doing your job right. But if you're gonna say he's a AB person, he believes in himself. He thinks about himself. He doesn't think about the team. Then don't discount what he did Sunday as just about his his uh, a mental illness. That's the point I'm trying to make. He went down to Miami last year. He was getting his way. They were winning, right? Did you hear anything? Cool as a cucumber, right? Everything was everything was legit. But now he is not getting his way, and he's acting like a small brat. So, is he turning the CTE on whenever it's convenient? That's my question. That's my question. Now, if you want to start typing, you can start typing now. All right. If you want to call me a jerk, you want to call me insensitive. That's fine. Obviously, you don't know me. And obviously, you didn't hear what I said prior to this statement. But all I'm saying is this. 
let's not be quick to just say, hey man, CTE is the blanket for all bad behavior. Sometimes bad behavior because you're a jerk. Then there's that, okay? All right, so um, Tampa Bay got the win, who really cares? Um, Jets put up a nice fight. If you're a Jet fan, um, I guess you enjoyed most of the game, I guess. I don't know, but I'm not a Jets fan, so it don't really matter to me. So anyway, um, good win for Tampa. Um, and um, I don't think it changed any of their positions in the playoffs. I don't think this game really mattered to them anyway. So, you know, good win for them. But um, let's just see what happens in the playoffs, right? They're dealing with a lot of injuries. So let's see what happens in the playoffs. Miami and Tennessee, man. This was just a simple game um, to analyze. Running game, defense. <laughs> There's nothing else to be said. Tennessee running game got on track. You know, they that running game got on track. And Miami just had no answer for it. Uh, this, this Tennessee defense uh, answered the bell. And um, look, Tennessee is now, has they are in position to get the number one overall seed. Okay, so um, motivation factor, I guess, was there. And uh, Miami was a hot team coming in, but um, Tennessee, man, look, running game, defense. That's playoff football. <laughs> That's playoff football. So uh, good win for Tennessee. And um, you are uh, you in a good position, man, to, to be in these, um, to be the number one seat. So. Uh, good one for you. Uh, Jaguars in New England, there's nothing to say about that. I mean, New England put a 50 spot on the Jaguars, you know. That's what I was telling you in the last video, man. Jaguars, I mean, uh, uh, New, uh, New England, they don't play with bad teams. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, you, you could debate and talk about when they're playing a good team, right, Whether what they're going to do. When they play bad teams, you can almost book it. They hardly ever let a bad team get any air <laughs> and they will put their foot on your neck. You know, that's the, that's that Belichick way, man. He believes in it, man. So, um, well, obviously he believes in it is his way. Right. But I'm just saying his team believes in his, uh, philosophy when it comes to that, you, you got a team that you're supposed to beat. You make sure when they leave, they know that they just got beat. <laughs> no, no questions asked. Right. <laughs> um, this next game, KC and uh, and Cincy, man, that was a good game. That I mean, that was a really, really good game. That was so exciting to watch, right? And um, look, what else can you say about this game other than um, Jamar Chase? <laughs> this was the, the Jamar Chase show. Bottom line, that dude. He put up a show. So KC had a very good first half. And, um, you know, you look at, you know, you know, on paper, it may have been, kind of, you know, they actually, I'm sure, if I didn't look at the stats, but I'm sure in the first half, they had much better stats than Cincy, right? The eyeballs told you that, hey, man, KC is going to win this game. Jamar Chase, I ain't even going to say Cincinnati. <laughs> Jamar Chase said, I'm going to keep my boys in the game until the second half when we get our shit together, my, our stuff together, okay? And boy, did he did. There were two spectacular catches, right, that he made to keep these guys in the game in the first half, okay? Second half, since they played a, a more complete game uh, on both sides of the ball, and man, this was a very, very exciting game. Epic finish, epic finish. Now, some people could say that, you know, since he got some good, some favorable calls at the end of the game. Look, I don't really see a, a huge problem with what, what, what happened at the end of the game. Um, I give Cincy credit for going for it on fourth um, and goal twice. You know, the first time they got um, offsetting penalties, right? So you might think, well, you know what? Let's just go on ahead and kick the field goal. You know, we dodged the bullet right here. Um, you know, we 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 almost got in, you know, but, you know, 
uh, uh, your boy uh, uh, um, Mixon almost got in right. He, he he was just a little short. Look, we dodged the bullet, man. Let's go in here and just kick a field goal and rely on our defense to get us the win, right? Nah, them boys said no. We going for it all, and they went for it. they went for the touchdown on the second time around, the second fourth down play, right? Now that play you can say they got a favorable call, but as much as I don't like some of those calls, it was if it, it, it was a hands to the face. The defender did hit the receiver in his face. Okay, that's a penalty. Do I like the penalty? Not necessarily, but let's be honest. That's the penalty. Now, should it be called at that stage of the game? Again, I don't know, but it was a penalty. <laughs> okay, so you know it. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. You did as a football team. You have to just deal with whatever cards you dealt, right? So um, they got the. Uh, the, uh, the extra downs, ran out the clock, and uh, got the victory, you know? So, uh, good win for uh, KC. Epic, epic game. Uh, epic finish. Um, I hope these guys play again in the uh, in, in the playoffs because that was um, that, that was pretty nice. I, I, I truly enjoyed that game. I truly enjoyed that game. So, uh, let's move on. Let's try to get through some of these other games. Um Bears and the Giants, nothing much to say here. Good win for the Bears. Uh, Giants, we've already talked about your issues. You got a clean house, man. You got a lot of things to deal with. So nothing much to say. Solid win for the Bears. Um, Buffalo and, and, and Atlanta. So, uh, again, this is one of the other games where um, the quarterback really earned his, his, uh, his paycheck, right? So Josh Allen, again, Josh Allen – kept both teams in this game <laughs> okay he kept both teams in this game all right uh atlanta look man y'all <laughs> was it good defense or bad quarterback play i don't know <laughs> the bottom line is it, it 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 made for a competitive game i think buffalo uh your, your, the eyeballs test right i talk about that a lot right the eyeballs test told me buffalo was a much better team than you right but uh, Buffalo has a quarterback that wanted to keep you in the game, and that's what he did. He kept you in the game. <laughs> so, so um, Buffalo, uh, good win for you. Um, I think you really need need this win to uh, really you know solidify your playoff uh, spot. Um, you now, uh, I think you have a, a heads up on New England now for the division. Um, I think you win and you and you get it. We'll talk about that a little bit later. I got that all. I got a, I got a lot of notes because there's so many scenarios, you know. But we'll talk about that later. But a uh, good win for you, a, a win you think you really need it. You lose to a team like ATL, and I'm not. There's no shade on ATL, but you lose to a team uh, like that, and, and something happens where you don't win your division. It's your fault. Okay, so good win by you. Uh, Denver and the Chargers. Um, so, um, well, I don't want to make it as simple as this, but let's be real. Denver can't beat a real team. <laughs> you know, name a good victory Denver has this year. Okay. Name one. All right. I don't want, it's not, I don't want to say it's that simple, but it's kind of that simple. Right. So, um, the Chargers have a lot to play for in this game. Uh, they're playing for their playoff uh, life, in essence. Um, so they needed this victory. Uh, they got the victory. But um, look, man, Denver, um, they got some things going for them. But let's be honest, man. Denver cannot win. Well, they have not win. I ain't saying they can't. They haven't won. A, they haven't beat a good team this year. So then there's that. Um, so good win for the Chargers. Uh, Houston and the 49ers. So, um, one takeaway I got from this game, um, uh, Trey Lance. Trey Lance played a very good game in this, in this game. Uh, it was a game that 49ers really needed in order to keep their playoff, um, hopes alive. 
they actually, I think, are in, you know, if it ended today, they're actually in the playoffs. But there's a scenario we'll talk about later that kicks them out. They lose this game, and it, it becomes very difficult. So needed win for them, nice win. My biggest takeaway from this game, not that part of it, um, but my biggest part was seeing um, uh, uh, Trey Lance have a good game, and he did. He had a very, very good game. So good win for the um, for the 49ers. Uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh and the Browns. So, again, this is one of those games. Everyone, um, look, the Browns are the Browns, okay? They, um, I mean, collapse. I mean, that's all you can really say, right? Um, Baker is... You know, I, I told you a long time ago, Baker has gotten his eviction notice. He's out of the house. You know, that's no longer his house. <laughs> they played in Pittsburgh, but the joke is he got a commercial saying this is his house, right? They didn't gave his ass an eviction notice. In fact, I think he's not even starting this, this week 18 game. You know, so <laughs> if he didn't know he was kicked out, he know now. <laughs> So anyway, um, this game, basically, you know, everyone hyped it up as, um, you know, the uh, last game, last home game for um, for Ben. And they made a big thing about it. You know, um, fans was giving him his fair wear, well, what and all this stuff, you know. But the bottom line, this this win was on the back of the running game and the defense. You know, that's that's what won this game. Ben just, you know, held on. <laughs> okay? Ben just held on. The running game uh, provided the win. This defense provided the win. Okay? So let's, let's keep it real when it comes to that. Um, good win for Pittsburgh. You, you're keeping, you, you have hope for the playoffs. It's kind of slim. We'll get to that. It's kind of slim, but a good win for you. Um, Browns, um, hey, man, they, they is, you know, you do this packing, just help him pack. Get him out of the house, man. That's all I got to say. Um, Green Bay and the uh, Vikings. So it's just a complete um, team win. Um, they, you know, Green Bay is very hard to to uh, beat at home. Um, this is a division game, like I was saying, so they're not going to overlook them. Um Number one seed was on the line for Green Bay, so they were motivated to win this game, uh, no doubt. And uh, they, you know, they proved they were the better team, uh, the highly much much motivated team, and um, they got the victory. Right? There's not much to be said about it. Right? They just take care of business. You know, that's all there is to it. Right? Uh, Vikings was shorthanded, didn't have their starting quarterback in there, but um, Vikings still, I just don't see them having it up. They have some nice pieces. Some nice pieces in uh in in um in, in um, Minnesota, but um they just didn't have enough. Uh, they just this whole season you just feel like they were just a tad short, you know, just didn't have quite enough the whole year, right? And um that's kind of like um you know what what was shown here, just didn't have enough. Green Bay just a better team, and they were just a little bit more motivated. Okay. Uh the Lions and um, Seahawks. So, uh, look, man, bottom line, Seahawks are a better team. They are, uh, I had said in the very beginning of, this, of the year, Seahawks would take a, was going to take a step back, and that's what happened. But they're still a good team. You know, they still have good pieces, uh, quality players. It's just that they couldn't put it all together Um and and it was always seemed like something was missing. Even either the offense wasn't playing well, defense plays well, defense plays bad, offense plays well. They just couldn't get it matched up, couldn't get it synced up right. So um that's the story of their season. But they were a better team uh, than Detroit, bottom line. They put up a fifty spot. Now they gave up thirty nine, I mean twenty nine, but they put up a fifty spot on them. Just a better team, running game. Just took over, you know. I, you know, I, I'm entertained by the passing game. I love to see good passing games, but what I'm truly in love with is a running game. 
I love to see a running game come together. And that's what this game held. This game had a very good running game by Seattle. And um, it, was, um, it was a joy to watch. Um, this next game, so Dallas and Arizona. So Dallas, I'll be honest with Dallas. Um, so, you know, you're dealing with a lot of injuries, okay? And that's, that's legitimate, man. I'm not going to sit here and say there's no excuses. Look, man, when you don't, we, they're starters for a reason, okay? Now, this whole mantra of next man up, hey, this, it's legit. It's legit. And that's how you have to conduct yourself, you know? If you sit up and say, well, if our starter goes out, we have no chance, then, you know what I'm saying? How, how does that come across, right? So, there is something to say about, hey, next man up, you have to be deep. You have to good, have good quality backups, right? Um, but Dallas is dealing with a lot of injuries. Let's just be honest, okay? Um, but I think that really wasn't the story of this game. I think the true story to this game was that Arizona was tired of being kicked in the butt. Arizona, I think, in my mind, was highly motivated, right, to prove that we have, um, we, we have to be dealt with. We are not going to just limp into these playoffs and, and, and not be relevant. I think that's what was going on in this game. I think they really was highly motivated to get better, to, to play better going into these playoffs, right, um, they still have an outside chance for the division, but it's very slim, right? But they're locked up for the for the playoffs, right? And um, but I just think they're just tired, you know. And uh, 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 Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Murphy is just he's he's a great player, and um, he threw some dimes in this game. He threw some absolute dimes, right? And I thought that Dallas defense was going to be the difference in this game. And he said uh, he wasn't having it. He just simply wasn't having it. So good win um, for Arizona. Um, I'm not going to say a bad loss for Dallas. Certainly wasn't a bad loss. It didn't really cost him anything, right? You just want to play well going into the season. You still got another game to do that. But um, you was playing a quality opponent, and um, they just was highly motivated, and they got the victory over you. And I'm not going to buy into the jokes, okay? Now, I'm going to say the jokes. <laughs> but I don't believe them. These just jokes. Okay? Can Dallas be the real team? <laughs> okay? Can Dallas really be the real good team? All right? Can they? I mean, they lost to the Raiders. <laughs> Got you, boy. I know you laughing. You cutting the gut right now. I know you are. <laughs> no, nah, seriously though. Um, Dallas, listen. Um, I say that, uh, and I, I made a joke on it, but seriously, really seriously, I'm not saying you should be concerned, but I'm just saying, a few weeks ago, you were really talking about like winning. Um, the number one seed. You're talking about you and uh, uh, Tampa Bay being the best two teams in the conference, and you know these, this type of conversation. Listen, you, I'm not look. I'm not a Dallas fan, but I'm also not a Dallas hater. I don't hate your team. Okay, I'm just recognizing what I see. Okay, and you are not. You haven't played well against quality teams. You have some good wins, right? You have some good wins. I'm not saying, but at the same time, and, and look, early in the season, I was saying how horrible this division was, right? And the division kind of proved me wrong. Your division isn't the worst division. But let's be real, man. It's not the strongest either. So because you played well against division opponents, right? And because you got some wins a few you know, decent wins during the season, right? Doesn't make you the best team or one of the best teams in this uh, conference. Arizona just showed you they could beat you. 
You ain't going to tell me the Rams can't beat you. Tampa Bay is in this conference. And did I mention Green Bay? That's four teams right there. Okay? So, listen. I'm not saying give up on your team, obviously. You have a very good team. But this conversation I hear from Dallas fans that, hey, we're going to the Super Bowl. We are the best team in this conference. Let's take a, big, a step back. Let's have a little reality check, right? You are a good team. All right. How do you play against quality opponents? We're about to find out. It's the playoffs, baby. A few weeks, we're talking about playoff football. So let's just, you know, we'll see what happens down the road. Okay. So um, that's, I think that wraps up week 17. Um, let's, let's talk, let's take a little break from, from the pros. Uh, in fact, let me, uh, it's starting to get a little dark out here, and I got these sunglasses on because of the the um, sun was right in my eyes. Need to change glasses. So on uh, YouTube, you saw the changing of the glasses. I apologize, Spreaker. You have no clue, uh, but you do now because I just told you, right? Anyway, um, let's go into a little college. So um, before we get into the championship matchup. I just want to make a mention about uh, my LSU Tigers. Uh, a few things, right? Um, two things that are probably not on people's mind right now because it's not really, you know, it's not really relevant right at this moment. To me, it is because I'm a college guy, right? My LSU uh, lady basketball team playing very good right now. I am, I am very happy of the play uh, these young ladies are, are displaying right now. We're beating some. We're beating some ranked teams, um, and it, it it feels good. It feels real good. Okay. Uh, last night, um, that would be Tuesday. Okay. Uh, the men's LSU men's got a nice victory against Kentucky. That felt real good. We dropped the game uh, last week to Auburn. Um, it was. It's hard to beat Auburn in Auburn. Um, I think we played a decent game, but. Uh, Auburn, you know, that's that's their home and they, they're going to protect their house. So uh, that was, um, I ain't going to say a bad loss, but, you know, we lost that one. But this was a good victory for the program. Um, I, I really enjoyed that game. Um, and the football team, so we played in the Texas Bowl. Who cares, right? But uh, what I do want to say about that is that um, we had so many opt-outs, injuries, uh, transfers, the whole nine yards, right? Um, this program has had top recruits uh, for years, right? And um, the guys that played uh, are, we, we, we're talking about second strings, third string players, you know what I'm saying? Um, and we got beat. Uh, but what I really want to say is I really enjoyed um, watching these young men fight. Um, they was outmanned by a very good uh, Kansas State team. But uh, even in a loss, these young men, um, they played hard. Um, the interim coach, uh, Brad Davis, um, did. A, I think he did a good job. Now, he said he did a, a bad job in the press conference. And um, sure, I mean... They didn't win the game, but you was out, man. You were playing against, um, you know, a decent team. And I'm not, not going to even say it was a quality team, but they were playing a uh, more full-strength uh, uh, roster where you were playing second and third stringers, okay? Uh, so, you know, you was out, to me, you was out, man. Um, and um, I just, I'm proud of my school. I'm proud of this uh, program. I look forward to what Kelly is going to bring. I look forward to the future. And um, I just hope that we can be competitive and, and be in the national conversation for the right reasons uh, moving forward. So I'm hoping that's what um, what, what transpires. So um, LSU, we took it on the chin, but uh, hold your head up. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be back.
as far as this national championship game. So this wasn't a matchup I predicted. Uh, I did predict I was pulling against Bama, but I predicted Bama was going to get the victory. They're just a more complete team, right? Um, where I was wrong was, and, and, and really drastically wrong was, I thought that um, Michigan was going was going to be able to uh, run the ball against um, against uh, Georgia, and I was wrong. I was I was really really wrong. <laughs> I was that was uh, one of the worst predictions I made all year. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't saying I'm great on predictions, but that was probably one of the worst because <laughs> they couldn't do nothing against that team, right? Uh, Georgia came in there with, I mean, they were obviously they're highly motivated. I mean, the road to the national championship doesn't motivate you, would will, right? But I think they had added motivation because they went into the SEC championship game undefeated. People were already casting them off like, there's no way you're going to win against Bama. And they didn't. And I think their feelings got hurt. I think they were like, you know what? For all you who think we're not a quality team, we're going to fight for that rematch. We're going to fight to get into that championship game. And I don't care who's in our way. You know, big blue or no big blue, right? We're going to show you whoever's in our way. We are one of the best teams. We are the best team They're in their mind, right? And they did, they did the damn thing. <laughs> they did it, man. They did it. So congratulations to uh, Georgia for getting into the championship game, um, forcing that rematch against Bama. Now, as far as this game, I'm going to be totally honest with you. Totally honest with you. This is a game where I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you what I, I feel is going to happen, but I am simply want to sit back and enjoy this matchup. That's all I want to do. I think this, is, I think this has the potential of being an epic game because to me it's the classic matchup. Good offense against good defense. Classic matchup, okay? So I just want to enjoy it. I want, a, I want a good game, I want a competitive game, and I want to be able to enjoy the end of the college football season on a high note. I don't want to blow out. <laughs> Please, no blowouts, okay? Let's see something competitive, okay? Now, what I think uh, could happen in this game. So, I see a road for both teams winning. I see... Georgia has the defense, although they didn't play well the first matchup, right, in the, in the SEC championship. I definitely see them playing, uh, that they can play well, right? Um, their offense is capable of putting up some points, right? But it's going to be, the defense is going to be required to really play to, to their highest potential, okay? They're really going to have to play well. Because Alabama is a complete team. And what Alabama does, Alabama is going to beat you however they can. They are not going to force their will. What they're going to do is however they see your flaws, however they see a path to victory, that's the path they're going to take. If that means throwing the ball 60 times, that's what they're going to do. If they think it's running the ball 60 times, that's what they're going to do, okay? If it means putting up a goose egg on defense, then they're going to try their best to do that. So whatever they feel the path to victory, that's exactly what they're going to do. So it's so hard to predict this situation because on one hand, I see, and to be honest with you, I see Alabama as a better team. They have much better quarterback play, in my, in my opinion. Sorry, Georgia fans. I'm, you know, look, it is what it is, man. Uh, I see much better quarterback play in Alabama. They have a capable running game, right? They have a very, you know, good, you know, well-balanced defensive uh, team. Um, they're just a solid team. 
You know, they're just not solid. They are a great team across the board, okay? What Georgia has, I think Georgia has the potential, to the potential of, of really putting up a good defense. I think they could really play well on defense. The main thing they have going for them is that revenge factor, that chip on their shoulder. And guys, you may think that that's not, that's not that important. It's important on every level. It's important in the pros, okay? But it is extremely important in college at this level. Two great teams, and you're looking for the edge here and there, right? Revenge and playing with that chip on your shoulder motivates these young men. That guy that is not going pro, that has been sweating out, you know, these three years of spring practice and all these games during the year. And, you know, they, they got that last, that senior year and they, they got that starting job and, you know, they are a decent player, but they know they're not going to the pros. This is their shot. This game right here is going to be talked about for the rest of their life, right? And now you put a chip on their shoulder and you motivate them, they just might play out of their mind, <laughs> okay? They just might play out of their mind, okay? So that's what makes it so hard to predict, right? Now... I want to I want to give a prediction because that's kind of like you know what I'm supposed to do, but to be honest with you, I really don't. I really just want a good game. But if I have to make a prediction, and you guys are gonna force me, huh? Damn, it's hard for me to go against Nick Saban, man. I'm going to go with Alabama. I'm going to go with Alabama. And what, what I hope is an epic game. I'm going to go with Alabama. And I'm going to say the difference is, um, is young. I'm going to say the difference is going to be the quarterback play. That's what I'm going to say. Okay? You forced me to. I wanted to sit back and enjoy things, but you forced me to make a prediction. So there you go. You, I got, you got your prediction. All right? So let's get back to some of these, um, the, the professionals, okay? So, uh, look guys, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, you got the playoff picture, you got these games that, um, you know, and let's see, how should I do this? Um, let's go with my predictions. I'm gonna go through every team, go through the predictions. Then I'm gonna go back and look, run through the scenarios of, um, who could get in and all these things. Um, so let me get a little light here. It's getting a little speaker. You, you, you know, it don't matter to you speaker, but YouTube might care. Um, they might want to see this mug of mine. So let me give uh, YouTube a little light. I mean, I, yeah, YouTube. The other day I said Facebook. I don't know where that came from. I, I hardly ever do Facebook videos. But anyway, so um, we're going to, Hit on some games that are important. Games are not important. We're going to just breeze right through them. 49ers and the Rams. This is an important game. Um, I feel the Rams is going to win this game. And um, I, I just see the defense. The defense being the key. Um, uh, Trey Lance had a very good game last week. Um, but he's playing a very, very good defense. A defense that's, um, you know, they still have an opportunity to get that number one seed. Um, no, they don't. I'm sorry. They don't have a. They don't have that spot. But they. I mean that thing. But they do want to clinch the division. I don't think they have the division. Um, let me look at my notes here. I think they're still playing for the division. Uh, sorry, guys. Oh, yeah, they clinched the playoff spot. Yeah, and there's still a scenario where they could, um, where Arizona could win the division. So. They want the division, so they're going to be motivated. Um, it's a division game, so they, they're not going to overlook the 49ers, right? Um, they want to go into the playoffs uh, playing well. They have a much better defense. 
I think. Um, I think that's going to be the difference, right? And uh, the 49ers are highly motivated because they're trying to get in the play. They're trying to hold on to their playoff spot because a loss here could um, cause them to miss the playoffs. So I know that they're going to play hard. So it could be a very competitive game. But I just think the Rams have a better complete uh, de uh, um, uh, team. Um, I think that the uh, defense is going to be the, the difference in, the, in this game. Um, OBJ is uh, playing very well right now. Excuse me. OBJ is playing very well right now. And so I think that's going to be the difference, um, uh, mainly the defense. So looking for Rams to get a victory there. And that's going to be a key to what happens in this playoff picture. Okay. Colts and the Jaguars. Um, so the Colts, um, they're in the playoffs, but um, it, it means something for other teams. They simply, I think, are a better team than the Jaguars. They don't need this game, but they're just simply, you know, a better team, right? That's just the bottom line. They're just a better team. So it, it's the Jaguars, you know what I'm saying? So um, I look for the coach to, you know, most likely get this victory unless they just completely just, hey, rest everybody, don't care about it and, you know, but that's very dangerous going into the playoffs. So I think that they're going to try to play well and go into the playoffs uh, on a high note. Um, so I look for the coach to get a win here. New England and uh, Dolphins. So the bottom line here, I think the biggest difference here is the running game and the defense for New England. Okay. I think New England um, has a, uh, the running game to get a win here. Um, and they have the defense. So, um, Tua has been playing well, right? But uh, last week loss, you know, destroyed their playoff hopes. Um, they they came into that game um, motivated. They still had playoff aspirations, but that's dead now. And um, so I think there's a little letdown there. Um, the running game hasn't been firing very well. And New England plays well against the run. If you're going to rely on tour and not if if, if the if the Dolphins are not balanced, right? Um, I'm not saying tour can't get them to win. They can. Tua, I think is look. I think he's proven he's the franchise franchise quarterback, right? But against this quality of a defense, I think um, I think they're going to have a problem. They're going to, they're going to struggle. And I don't think that um, if there's any strong to me. This is my eyeballs tell me, right? If there's any strong side to the Dolphins' defense, it's their um, defending the pass. I think they are not as well as defending the run. And New England wants to run the ball. So I think the path to, for victory for New England is to run the ball. And they are motivated. They want the division. They want that division, right? They're in the playoffs. But they, there's still an opportunity for them to win the division. So um, motivation, running game, defense, to me, equals a, a, a New England win. This game right here, Dallas and the Eagles, It's I, I've been back and forth on this game so much. I don't know what's going to happen in this game. Both these teams are in. Can it end in a tie? <laughs> Really? Can it end in a tie? Because <laughs> in essence, I, you know, in Dallas, you might, you might really feel like I'm, I'm playing with you or, or throwing shade at you or whatever. I see these two teams as very equal. I think you have a little bit better defense, but in a lot of ways, these team, two teams are pretty equal. I really do. The records doesn't say that. The records say that Dallas is a much better team. My eyeballs tell me these are two very, very similar teams, okay? Um, now, yeah, I will give it. Hey, Dallas, you do have a better defense. I will give you that, okay? But um, Eagles, um, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Eagles. Um, they have two things going for them. They're at home, right? Another thing is um, that revenge factor, right? In division match matchups, rivals like this that means a lot okay and i think that 
probably would be the difference. I'm going to go with the Eagles uh, simply because of that revenge factor and home field. Home field. But again, can they tie? <laughs> I don't know, man. This is a good question. Jets and the Bills. Um, uh, I, I, Bills, just a better team. There's no if and buts about it, right? Um, I, I see the Bills winning this game. They have all the motivating factors they need, right? They need to win to secure the division, right? Um, they're a better team. They want to go in the playoffs on a high note. You can't win to the, you can't lose to the Jets and feel good about going into the playoffs. Let's be real, okay? <laughs> so, uh, and again, all these games, these are all division games. That's one good thing about the NFL, what they do toward the end of the season. They, they like to put rivals and at least division matchups on the board, right? To make these games mean something, you know, if nothing else for pride, right? So um, this is a division game. Bill's a much better team. So, and they're motivated because they want the division. So uh, a win will give them the division. So uh, I see them winning this game. Um, this is a big question mark right here. Green Bay and the Lions. Now you say, wait a care. How can that be a question mark? Well, um, okay. Green Bay has absolutely zero to play for. So they're not motivated at all. Other than the fact that they're playing the Lions, right? Which is a division opponent, but are they a real rival? It's only a rivalry if you have beaten them recently. Back if you've swapped victories back and forth, right? Just because you're in the same division doesn't really make you a rival. The the Lions might look at them as being a rival, but I'm talking about uh, Green Bay. Green Bay doesn't look like look at the Lions and say, "Oh, that's our rival," right? That's more of a a, a, a Bears conversation or uh, um, Vikings conversation, right? So that's what makes it hard really for me to pick a winner here. I have a feeling that Jordan Love is going to probably play. I think they might set um, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I don't think he's like riddled with injuries and needing of a rest, but I think he has a toe issue that rest could probably help him, right? Uh, and that would give him two weeks off to really rest that toe. And um, I think they have the confidence of him coming back after two weeks and not really having Russ. So I got a, f a very strong feeling. Now, I don't know. This is Wednesday, so they haven't really made, as far as I know, they haven't made an announcement. I got a feeling that, that uh, Jordan Love is going to get a start here. I got that feeling. Um, and I'm not saying that's going to cost them. In fact, that might help them, okay? Because we all know that, you know, this year, the whole Aaron Rodgers, you know, drama with the organization has died down during the season, right? But before the season, that was on high alert. That was a big story, right? So what's going to happen at the end of the season? What's going to happen next year? They drafted Jordan Love as the next guy, okay? So I think the organization and his coaching staff wants to show if he starts, right? Wants to show that this organization is in good hands despite not having Aaron Rodgers. So that might be the motivating factor for them to play well, or at least coach well, okay? The Lions, they have had some nice victories, right? Um, and they're capable of making this game close, right? So I'm, I just... I don't know how to how to pick this game. I'm going to say Green Bay, but I can easily see um, the Lions winning. And I'm picking Green Bay because I think I think the the team uh, and the, especially the coaching staff is going to really push. If Jordan now, if Aaron Rodgers plays, they're going to win. Okay. If Jordan Love plays, um, I think there's still I think there's a very good chance of them winning. Because they, I think the motivation of uh, uh, showing that the organization is still in good hands is going to be there. So uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Green Bay.
I'm going to go with Green Bay. But I can easily see why Green Bay just walks into this game and sleeps. <laughs> right? I can easily see that. Okay? Um, Tennessee and the Texans. Um, bottom line, uh, Tennessee. Tennessee uh, has a, a, a clear path to the number one seed with a victory right here. Um, they have a, a a running game, I think, that's fire, firing on all cylinders now. You're playing a team that doesn't uh, uh, defend the run very well. So I look for a, a huge running game for Tennessee. They're motivated because, you know, they want their number one seed. That means something, right? Um, so I'm looking for Tennessee to get a victory. And let's, let's be honest, they're a better team. You know, bottom line, they're a better team. But now you look at the motivation, right? They're highly motivated to get that secure number one seed. So I look for Tennessee to get a victory here. Uh, Washington and the Giants. Listen, man, look, look. Washington, better team. Uh, not a playoff team, obviously. Better team than the Giants. A lot of, lot of things to work out with the Giants. We don't have to waste time on that. Pittsburgh and the Ravens. This is going to be very interesting, Okay. I feel, I feel, I'm going with the Ravens. Here's why. The Ravens still have a slim hope of a playoff run, playoff uh, spot, right? It's slim, very slim, very, very, very slim. That's not the motivating factor to me, though. I think the motivating factor to me is, A, they're at home, Okay. B, this team all season, in their eyes, in our eyes, right, will playoff team. Let's be real. You cannot sit here and say you didn't view the Ravens as a playoff team, okay? And now they're going into this last game with a very, very slim hope of getting into the playoffs. That has to be disappointing. The fans have to be disappointed, right? And I think, especially going against, look, this is a big rivalry. This is not like uh, who I was talking about earlier. This is not like Green Bay and the Lions, right? Um, the Steelers and the, right, and the Ravens, they swap victories. This is a rivalry, okay? Uh, they don't necessarily like each other, okay? Um, so let's just start there, right? The Ravens want to beat Pittsburgh. If for no other reasons, because that's their rival, okay? They have a slim hope of getting in the playoffs, but I think they want to. I think they want to have a good showing uh, to end this season. Um, they've had some injuries, they've had some bad luck, and uh, they're probably not going to get into the playoffs. But I think they want to end this season on a high note, okay? Um, they're certainly capable. Uh, Pittsburgh, to me. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't feel Pittsburgh is a playoff team. They have an opportunity to get in the playoffs also. But I don't feel Pittsburgh is a, is a playoff team. They have a great coach. And my invitation is still open for him, for him to come coach my Raiders. <laughs> okay? That door is always open. Okay? They have had a great coaching uh, um, season. Right? Um and the team has played pretty decent. Um, ben has taken a step back. I mean, he, he's on his way out. So, uh, obviously, you know, he doesn't have it anymore like that. Uh, and I just feel like the Ravens have something to prove, uh, if nothing else, to themselves and to their fans that um, we're going to end this thing right. We're going to beat our rival. We're going to send you into the offseason feeling good um, by sending, uh, you know, Pittsburgh home with a with a, with a uh, with a loss, right? And we're gonna send you home uh, with a victory. We're probably not gonna make the playoffs, but let's feel good about this victory going into the off season. Okay, that to me is what's going to be the difference. Okay, um, and to be honest with you, I think the Ravens are a better team, but injuries. You, they're dealing with a lot, a lot of injuries. So that to me is is something that you really have to consider right um but i think they are going to overcome those injuries uh for those those factors okay 
uh, Cincy and the Browns. So, uh, I just don't see. Now, some may say Cincy might sleepwalk into this game. Um, there's nothing really to gain, right? They won the division. Um, their seat is pretty much locked in. Um, it's a division game. Um, they don't necessarily like the uh, like the Browns, right? Uh, it's uh, the uh, Ohio, uh, what is uh, title for Ohio or whatever they want to call it, right? Uh, there's that to be said, right? Um, the Browns are going to be playing the backup. I don't think. Uh, uh, Baker is going to even be playing in this game, which I think is a positive for the Browns. <laughs> I think that's a positive for the Browns, right? Not a negative. I think it's a positive, right? Um, if the Browns keep this game on the ground, they have a good chance of making it close, and if that defense gets motivated, um, I see a path for victory for the Browns. But uh, I'm not going that route. I think Cincy is going to complete this season. Uh, I think it's a game that do they do not need. Um, that title for Ohio, whatever they want to call it, right? I think is um, probably a little important to them. I don't know. I'm not close to that team, so I don't know. But I, I would imagine it's, it's something important to them. They're going into the playoffs. Uh, I think they want to going to the playoffs on a high note. So, um, yeah, I think since he's going to get this victory, I think he's going to go into uh, Baker's old house because it's not his house anymore. It's not Baker's house, man. It, I don't know why they run that commercial. Why do they still run that commercial? I guess they done paid for the ads. I don't know. But it ain't Baker's house no more, right? So they're going to go in Baker's old house and uh, come out there with a victory. So I feel Cincy uh, is going to get this one. Bears and the Vikings, uh, nothing much to be said. I'm going to just go with the Vikings. They at home. I'll just go with the Vikings, but nothing, nothing much to be said there. Uh, Kansas City and Denver. So, Kansas City, uh, I mean, there's an outside chance that, you know, they can still get uh, the, the number one seed. Um, Tennessee would have to lose uh, to the Texans. Uh, it's likely not going to happen. So um, they are probably um, secure in that number one spot. But Denver simply can't be a good team. I mean, there's no if and buts about it. All right. Name me a quality win against a quality opponent Denver has had this year. I'll wait. Okay. If Drew Luck, Drew Luck, I don't know why I keep saying Luck. If Drew Luck, is quarterback in this team, they will lose. Okay? All right? If Bridgewater was quarterback in this team, they probably still would lose. Right? I, I would think they would. Um, but I think they would have a, better, um, a, a much better chance if Bridgewater was quarterbacking. But he's not. This dude, Locke, is quarterbacking. So they're going to lose. Okay, just Denver, I mean, just live with it, man. Kansas City is a better team than you. I know it's a division rival. I get all that. You know, I know you're at home. I get that. Kansas City doesn't have much to play for. I get all that. You're reaching for straws. You're going to lose. Okay, you're going to lose. Um... The Raiders and the Chargers. I'm going to do a video on the Raiders and the Chargers later on. Um, but I will give you a little hint on where I'm going. Okay. I am trying to be a professional here. Okay. I'm trying not to be a fan. Okay. When I do this video, right? I'm trying not, I got my Raiders, Sprinkle, you don't know, I got a Raiders hat on right now, YouTube, you see it, right? I got a Raider hat on right now, and I'm trying to be professional. I'm trying not to let my fandom come out, 
Okay? I'm trying. All right? But I'm going to be consistent. Right? What factor do I always talk about? Right? The revenge factor. Okay? We owe them. We, I see, I said it. I wanted to be, I want to, I want to be that professional. Right? I want to be neutral. I try to be neutral, right? The Raiders, right, have that revenge factor going for them. Okay. Um, they definitely are motivated because they want to get into the playoffs. The Raiders actually have a, a path to the playoffs, even if they lose. We'll talk about that, but I don't want to get into that. All right. I don't want it to go there. I don't want it to go there. That sounds like a fan. Damn it. The Raiders shouldn't want to go there. Okay. What the Raiders should want is to win this game and get into the playoffs on their own merit. Okay. Now, the fan in me have a name for the charges, and I am going to refrain from saying it. Okay. But the mm, 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 charges, okay, um, they are motivated. But uh, I think that um, it's going to be difficult for them to get this victory. As a professional, that's the way I see it. Okay. Speaker, you can't see how I'm trying to refrain from laughing. And I couldn't stop it. I tried. I tried, guys. I tried so hard. I couldn't stop it. <laughs> but anyway, so look. Um, I, that's not an official prediction. I have to study more tape. Okay? I have to look at it. I want to see if there's any things that are... Look, there's somebody that might be coming back for this game, a certain tight end, okay, that Chargers going to have to deal with. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. So, look, um, let's go through these playoff um, scenarios we're going to try to go as quickly as I can. Um, let's start with the AFC. So um, the Titans, and I'm, I'm look, speaker, I'm looking down. I mean, on YouTube, I'm looking down. I apologize. I have notes. It's so much to talk about. I just can't memorize all this stuff, right? So I apologize for not looking at you when I'm talking. But, you know, hopefully um, you can um, understand that. So Titans are right now the number one seed. Uh, a victory for the Titans, um, and um, that's that's secured. Even with a loss uh, by Kansas City and uh, um, uh, Cincy, um, secures the number one seed. So I think the number one seed for them is pretty much locked up. Number two seed right now is KC. Number three, uh, and uh, so Titans still. Or um, they, they clinch a playoff spot, obviously. Um, I think the division is clinched also. I'm almost certain the division is clinched. Um, and the number one seed is pretty much clinched. Cincy uh, has clinched um, their division, uh, obviously. Uh, number two seed is pretty much locked up. Um, number three seed is Cincy. Um, obviously they won the division and I think number three seed is pretty much locked up. Buffalo. Buffalo has clinched the playoff spot, but there's still, um, there's a must win for them, I think, to get into, um, to win the division. So they're in the fourth seed right now and they're fighting, uh, for the division. They must win. New England is a fifth seed. They need Buffalo to lose in order to get uh, the division. They must win and get, um, and Buffalo must lose. But they're locked in at the fifth seed. Sixth seed right now, as we stand, is the Colts, right? Um, I think that's going to change. Uh, the Colts, I think, are going to get in, but, um, well, no, that's not going to change, but the Colts are going to be in. That's, 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 I, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the Colts are the sixth seed. That might fluctuate, depends on what happens. Um, but th right now they're locked in at the sixth seed. Um, and, you know, I think the Titans are going to win that division. So, um, the boats, um, see, I was nice. I didn't say it. 
they're in the seventh seed right now, but that's, they, you know, they are not uh, married to that spot. That is basically, um, they they must beat the Raiders um, to, to keep that. If the Raiders win, they're out. Um, and um, there's a scenario I'll talk about later on where they can actually get in, uh, even if they don't win. Hint, if they don't win, they can still get in, but there's a caveat to that. So um, right now, they're the seventh seed, and um, they um, they must win to keep that seventh seed. Also in contention is the Raiders, um, and they are basically win and they're in. Um, the Steelers and um, the Ravens. So we talked about uh, the Titans, um, one seed. They must win against um, against Houston. Again, Kansas City, same thing. We talked about them. We talked about um, Cincy. The Bills, again, if the Bills want to win the division, um, they must win against the Jets uh, or if the Patriots lose. Um, so they can still win the division if, the Patri if they lose and the Patriots uh, lose, they still win the division. So... Um, they win. Um, they have two ways to get in uh, to win the division. They're in the playoffs. Two ways to win the division. Um, New England, they only could win the division if the Bills lose. They must beat um, the Dolphins and they must get help from the, uh, from the Bills and uh, Bills must lose. Um, the Colts playing the Jaguars, um, they're in the playoffs. And they can still get in if quite a few teams uh, lose, right? We're not going to get into all that. Uh, they're in the playoffs, okay? Um, the, and we talked about the boats. Uh, we're, that, that's no big issue. We talked about the Raiders. One thing I said about the Raiders, one thing I said about the, the Raiders and, the, and the, uh, the boats, right? The charges. So it's pretty clear cut for the most part, right? Chargers must win to get in. Raiders could get in if Indy loses and Pittsburgh loses. So they could actually lose this game and still get in if Indy loses and Pittsburgh loses. Okay? There's another scenario. <laughs> and it's a very interesting question. If, because we already know this is a Sunday night game. And we already know whether or not Indy loss, if they lose, right? We we'll already know Pittsburgh, okay? We we'll know those things, okay? Well, I don't know if Pittsburgh is part of that. I don't know, but anyway, this is what I'm, the point I'm getting at. I know Indy has to lose for this to happen, right? This, this is interesting. If Indy loses and the Raiders and the Chargers tie they both get in. Isn't that crazy? They both get in. So, question. Question. If you are the Raiders and the Chargers, and you watched early in the in the in the day, somehow, some way, right? The Jaguars beat the Colts. Okay. Do you kneel down the whole game and call the tie? <laughs> So you both get in. <laughs> it's a it's a funny question. To me, hell no, hell to the mm -mm, no. You don't do that. You don't do that. I want to win. If I'm gonna get in, I want to either win or I'm gonna lose. I'm not gonna trick my way into the playoffs. <laughs> but it's an interesting scenario. Now, I thought that was very. <laughs> That was funny when I heard that. I'm like, damn, that really could happen. <laughs> Steelers. So the Steelers play the Ravens. So it's very complicated for how the Steelers could get in. Indy must lose. The Raiders must lose. Oh, the Raid. Oh, that's 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 the scenario for for um, the Steelers to get in. Indy must lose. And um, okay, so I guess the scenario. The uh, um, Indy and the Steelers must lose for that tie scenario to, to be to come into play. That must be that must be what it is. 
<laughs> that would be funny if that came about. But anyway, the only way the Steelers get in is if Indy lose and if that tie scenario happens, right? Then the Steelers would get in, okay? So, um, again, that's they're they holding on to us by a string. Also, the Ravens. The Ravens must win, right? Uh, plus, um, uh, Indy has to win. Miami has to win. And the Chargers have to win. And that would be the path for um, Baltimore to get in, okay? So that's... Um, you're asking for a lot. You're asking for three different teams to help you out in that in that situation. That's a lot, but that's the fate they're in, and it's uh, it's kind of sad because you got to look at that team is definitely a um, you know a playoff caliber team, but you you know that's why they play the season, right? So let's try to get through um, the the NFC. It's a little bit more clear cut. Um, Green Bay, number one seed, they're locked in. Um, the Rams, they have, um, of course, the second seed pretty much locked up. Um, there is a scenario where they could um, not win the division, but you know it, it would, um, you know, it, it would take a little bit. So that's we we'll talk about that in a little bit. Tampa Bay, third seed, um, that's pretty much locked up. Cowboys, fourth seed, that's pretty much locked up. Uh, wild card, fifth seed, uh, Arizona. Pretty much locked up. Right now, this is the one that's really in flux. Okay. 49ers are the sixth seed right now, but they have to play, uh, they have to beat uh, uh, the Rams in order to secure that spot. Because if they lose and the Saints win, they're out. Okay. So they have that sixth seed is in flux. It's, it's, uh, it's written in pencil, okay? It's not in ink. It's in pencil. Um, the Eagles are pretty much secure in their playoff spot. Um, the seeding is the only question mark in that in their in their situation. Uh, and the only other team that has a contention is New Orleans. And um, so uh, Green Bay, like I said, nothing to talk about there. Rams, I talked about it. They in the number one seed. They win. Or the Cardinals lose and they uh, win the division. Um, nothing for um, Tampa Bay to really play for here. Um, they can actually get the, the, the second seed, but, I mean, it would take the Rams. They win, the Rams lose, they get the second seed. It's not that big of a difference, okay? Um, Cowboys, again, nothing much to say. They, they're pretty much set in that fourth spot. Um Again, I talked about the Cardinals uh, and what's needed for them. Um, they must win and the Rams must lose in order for them to um, win the division. Uh, 49ers, I talked about them. They must win against the Rams. If they win and New Orleans um, wins, they're out. Okay. Uh, Eagles, pretty much like I said, the Eagles are pretty much uh, set. Um, their playoff, they clinched the playoffs, but the seeding could change a little bit. Depends on what happens with uh, the 49ers in, in New Orleans. And like I said, New Orleans, their their path is a 49ers loss to the Rams, and they must beat Atlanta. Okay, so um, that's the playoff picture. I hope I kind of cleared it up. Um, it's um, going to be exciting this last week, uh, as it always is. I look forward to. Um, the upcoming playoffs. I think it's going to be very exciting. Uh, guys, I got um, another video I'm going to put up. I'm going to break down the Raiders and Chargers game a little bit more in depth, uh, either on uh, probably on Friday, maybe even Saturday. No, yeah, I'm sure it'll be up on Friday. Um, I don't think I'll do it um, tomorrow. It'll probably be on Friday, okay? Because I want to wait to the last minute, try to see who's going to be in. The big thing right now is uh, Waller whether or not he's going to play or not. Uh, I think he's going to be a big key um, in, in whether or not we can get this victory. Uh, and I say we because I am a Raider, right? So, uh, guys, I hope you guys enjoy it. Guys, leave your comments. Give me that thumbs up. Helps the algorithm on YouTube. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. I'm trying to be more consistent 
with my timing, especially on this wrap up, uh, recap, wrap up show, prediction show. I'm trying to get it out on Wednesdays, but you never know. Look, guys, I, I, I have a fluctuating schedule. You never know how it's going to come out. So hit the notification bell and you get an alert. Also on Spreaker side, um, just follow me and um, follow Bill for this network and you'll see when it pops up. OK, and again, I'm trying to do it on Wednesdays uh, around this time, uh, around that six o'clock time. But that's not set in stone. So, guys, just just look out for your alerts. OK, guys, I want to appreciate your time. Um, I really, really enjoy doing these videos. I really enjoy doing this show. I uh, hope you guys are entertained. Um, I want to have fun. Uh, during the football season, we're going to continue, of course, through the playoffs. We're going to talk about the offseason when it comes about. We'll get into a little bit on basketball once the season is, once the football season is over. I uh, hope I, I don't bore you too much. I know you guys are not really on baseball, but I am. I'm a big baseball guy. So, guys, I hope you guys enjoy um, these shows. Uh, leave some comments of what you want uh, me to discuss. Um, I'll try to fit them in. Also, look up for some of the other shows I'm going to be doing. Uh, I just, I'm including a um, lifestyle change uh, show a couple times a month. Um, usually it's going to come out on a, on a, on a Sunday, uh, maybe a Monday, depending on my schedule. A um, couple times a month, we're going to update uh, my lifestyle change and try to motivate you, give you some ideas and give you some motivation to... Um, do some changes in your life, okay? This is about not about me. It's about us, okay? Uh, if you're into guns, I'm going to start doing. A, um, I'm always, not always. I'm putting out some gun content on the YouTube, YouTube uh, side. I'm planning on doing a show for Spreaker. Um, again, it's going to be a couple times a month, uh, reviewing some of the products I have, some of the uh, weapons that I have, some of the products, reviewing some of the products talking about a little 2A um, news, um, just some uh, guns and, and gun rights uh, discussions, okay? So look for those shows to come out um, maybe once or twice a month, okay? So guys, I truly, 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 man, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate your time. I hope I entertained you guys. Um, please excuse me for my corny jokes. I can't help it. Um, it's, that's who Ready Cav is. I'm a corny joke teller. Okay? That's who I am. Right? Yeah, love, uh, laugh at me or love or laugh with me. Okay? <laughs> Either way, be entertained. That's all I want. So, guys, um, thank you again for your time. I end these like I always do, guys. Take care of each other. Love each other. And guys, Ready Cav is out. Peace.